Hey everybody, Danny Lloyd here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I was just leaving the driving range and I saw one of my good friends, uh, Paul, on the chipping area and he was duffing his chip shots, leaving them basically almost like this. He's kind of in this chunk in front of his face. And then just after that, you then see him kind of obviously trying to get away from the chunk. He then blade it, almost start to thin it uh, onto the green. So. What we're going to cover in this week, I'm going to show you what we did. So about, only about 10 or 15 minutes, we got him swinging beautifully with chip shots. Um, so we're striking it more consistently. Now, at Canterbury at the moment, we've got some very muddy, horrible lies. So chipping and striking your chip shots is really at a premium. So I'm going to show you the, t uh, the basic technique that we gave Paul. It took only about 10 or 15 minutes to get him really striking it well. I'm also going to go into some difficult shots, like really muddy lies. And I'm going to go to a chipping over a bunker too, just as a, a little bit of a bonus. So let's get started. Let's have a look at this. So what Paul's doing is he was literally going at the ball. And when he goes at the ball, he, you, we saw this dip in his body. The front part of the golf club, this leading edge, starts digging into the turf. Now, why is he going after the, at the ball? Well, when I asked him a few questions, I started to get some insights. He was kind of focused only on this area. He was saying, Danny, where should I have the, golf, uh, the ball position? So right back in my stance, forward in my stance. Should I have the handle here or should I have the handle here? Where should I grip it? Now, I said, those things are important, Paul, and we're going to get to them, just as they are for you. We're going to get to them in a second. But the most important thing first is just the, sim the most simplicity of lick. If, I'm gonna, uh, if, if you're there and I'm here, and I'm going to throw a ball to you, look. As I'm throwing the ball to you, my arm goes back here and it goes through. I don't have to think about the action. It just goes back and through. Well, the same here is, uh, bears true with chipping. Paul had made that ball the target, and because of that, he was literally making a swing that did exactly what really, he didn't realize he was telling himself to do this, but it was going at the ball. If we were to help him change the target for a second and make the actual target the target, look what happens. I said, start to swing, forget about this for a second. Just focus on swinging towards your target, like this. Now suddenly, rather than an action that goes this way, it goes where? this way. So let me show you how we built that up so it became more natural. I said, look, to start with, take a few balls so you can learn the feel of this. You get yourself set, and what we're going to do, look at this. As I throw the ball towards the target, look at how my body naturally moves. It doesn't move like Paul was doing when this becomes too, when we're concerned about strike and all that kind of stuff, we end up kind of going like this. But when we forget about strike for a moment and we just think about throwing towards our target, look how our bodies naturally move. Then what we do is right, we need to learn the feel of this with a golf club. I love the one-handed exercise. In fact, I'm gonna, I've got a detailed um, video on this I'm going to put up in this top right-hand corner where I, I go into this in, in, in more detail. But one hands are a really great way because it's just like throwing. If, you, if you're right-handed, so left-handed but playing golf right-handed, I've got something for you coming soon. So watch this. As I'm swinging here, I'm just swinging towards my target. I make a few shots backwards and forwards. only concentrating on literally hitting towards my target. Notice now, everything flows. I'm putting the butt in my pocket. I'm not throwing the head down. So we went, that is the stage number one. And then the second hand comes in. So we're getting a feel for this. Take some time with this. Then we move on to stage number two, which is we bring the second hand in and off we go again. Swinging towards the target, not towards the ball. Very different, towards the target, not towards the ball. Look at how it naturally flows. There isn't a, dabbing, a stabbing motion at this. Now, now we can work on strike. Now you've got the natural motion of the body and it's flowing. We said to Paul, one of the things is um, you've got to stay relaxed with this. The arm when you throw is soft. Yeah, it's not stiff. So you've got to allow this to flow. This is scary for some people, particularly if you're an adult. You don't want to kind of, in a sense, let go of this. You're concerned of a strike. Allow this to flow. Now, as he was doing this, his strike was still a little bit inconsistent, but now he had flow. So I then said to him, right, now you've got flow towards the target. What I want you to do is I want you to notice how you're striking the ground. We want to be gliding this club through the ground like this. 
not, we're not putting too much emphasis on the stripe, we're, we're still flowing there, but what I'm doing is I'm noticing what's my strike like. And what are we trying, how are we start, trying to strike the ground? We want the bottom part of this golf club here to be gliding across the turf, just like this. What we do want to be doing here is getting the leading edge digging in. So you need to be able to basically almost kind of visualize two things. I need to be swinging towards my target whilst at the same time paying attention to am I getting the glide. Watch this. I'm throwing towards my target, but I didn't get the glide. I dug in. I could feel that. So off we go again. Oh, dug in again. So we keep going. I'm still swinging towards my target until I start to get the glide. You learn this feel. Off we go again, backwards and forwards, gliding through. And you'll notice no marks, no divots at all. Okay. So we're flowing through to the target. That's the target there. And as while we're kind of picturing the flight, we're noticing how that club is interacting with the ground. And at the same time, we're allowing it to flow just like the relaxed arm here. We're just flowing through to the target and away we go. Okay, now, now we go into the third and final stage. So now Paul is literally flowing. He's been able to be aware of what's happening at impact. Did he hit it all the time? Did he actually strike that um, ground sometimes? Of course he did. But now the difference was he had the flowing motion. He was able to kind of get to grips with, oh, I know what I'm trying to do and I want to be gliding this through the surface. Then what we said, right, now we get onto some mechanics as to where the ball should be, etc. But I said, look, we're not going to talk too much about it. I said, look, what I want you to do now is, is just like football, just like tennis, just like many sports, when you, I want you to now think about are experimenting with different heights. So I'm using a 52 degree wedge here, but you know what? What I'm going to do now is this. I'm not going to worry about ball positions or anything like that. I'm going to allow my body to naturally do this. I'm going to try and hit a couple of shots, one low and one high, doing the same thing. So I'm going to visualize a lower flight like this. This is what I did with Paul. I said, Paul, just like football, play a lower shot and then just imagine you're going to play a higher shot. So now we're going to try and do one a bit higher. And he goes, well, how do I do that, Danny? I said, don't think about it for a second. Just if you just uh, imagine the ball going a little bit higher, look up a little bit higher, and just start to experiment, just flowing through the shot. I fatted that one there, never mind. Let's do that again. One more time. So I'm going to hit this one a little bit higher. There we go. So it just floats up just a little bit higher and then grabs a little bit more. So I've got him to experiment now, but he's actually playing. He's not kind of going ball back, he's not making it artificial. You know, one of, the, one of the problems I think is, is people have so much to remember when they try to play golf. They say, oh, I've got to move the ball back, I've got to move the ball forward, etc., etc." And I think it's just way, way too complicated. So now look at this. I brought you to basically double whammy, muddy lie and going over a bunker. So let's deal with going over a bunker. So going over a bunker to start with should never, ever be a problem. I think the, this is more psychological than anything else. Everything we've just done is exactly the same thing. You just need to continue to flow as normal. The loft of the golf club will get it over a bunker. Everyone, or certainly a lot of people I find when they try to get it over a bunker, they're trying to make the, sh they're almost trying to play these lob shots to make it more complicated. You really don't need to do that. The bunkers, most of them, they can be really deep, but they're, they're not that high. You don't need to hit a high shot. So the first thing, you've got to get over the psychology, and that's just about just trusting, visualizing the shot you want to play. Now, playing muddy lies. There is a premium on strike, but we've just talked about using the bounds, getting this gliding effect. I hear a lot of people saying on muddy lies, you've got to get the ball back in your stance, hands forward. Look, that is a really risky strategy, particularly when you try to get it over a bunker. You know, if you're, uh, if you're getting that shaft leaning forward, that leading edge, the sharp bit, is going to be digging into that uh, turf. You've got to make sure you hit that ball. If you don't, you're fatting it. So what I'm doing here is exactly what we've just been doing. I'm really resting the bounce of the flat bit of the golf club on the mud. And what I'm practicing here is I'm going to flow through and I'm going to practice just gliding that base or the sole of the club through the mud. See if I can get this over the bunker. No. Wonderful. It's a tricky shot. <laughs> Let's have another crack at that one. Okay, one more time. So nice and easy, nice and smooth. 
There we go, I'm much more confident on that one, a bit more aggressive. Now, that's a completely different one. <laughs> so, even the pros find this a little bit tricky sometimes, but you can see here, the margin of error is so, so small, but it's just about getting a feel for what you're doing, having that confidence to go through it, and, and commit to the shot. So in summary, what have we done? We said, look, the ball is not the target. Striking the ball is not what we're aiming for here. What we're doing, first of all, is this. We are flowing towards the target. You do this with a relaxed, flowing motion of the arm. You allow the body to flow with the arm, just like if you were just rolling or throwing a ball underarm. You can do one-handed exercises like this. I told you I'll put a video in the top right-hand corner, which can really help you feel this. For some of you, it's gonna feel out of control and you won't like that, but this is how you generate feel. You don't throw a ball with a stiff arm, you have to be relaxed. And then um, the second point here was notice how you're striking the ground. This is how you improve the quality of your strike. We want to strike the ground with the sole plate, the flat bit of the golf club, gliding through. So when you're swinging backwards and forwards like this, the sole plate's gliding through. I remember something similar to this, which you may relate. I remember skiing once, and the skiing instructor saying to me, Danny, look at the view. And I'm like, I don't want to look at the view. I want to look at my skis. I, don't want, I want to know what they're doing. And I just, everyone crashes when you do that. You know, one of the things you've got to do is, is I looked at the view whilst listening and feeling for my skis and what they were doing. The same is true in golf. Look at where you're going, feel where you're going, this, that's where I'm flowing, and then it, just in their peripheral kind of senses, feel how that club is interacting with the ground. It makes a technique that doesn't go at the ball, but actually through the ball. And then the third and final thing, remember, this isn't just a bog standard, just hit it towards the target. Think about experimenting with the flight that you want. You know, the, all this does is it improves your feel, more feel about what you can do. Hope you really enjoyed this video. Again, check out a couple of the more videos on the short game I put in this top right-hand corner. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with some of your friends who are struggling with their short game. But until next week, have a great golfing week.